Hey guys, welcome to another one of those episodes that I call Too Good to Junk Pile. In my travels, I run across guitars that I just don't have the heart to look at them and go, okay, time for some matchbooks, time for some license plates. It's almost a crime or a sin to junk pile these things up. Now, you've seen some good ones come through here, but this is one of the better ones, and there is a weird, weird story. Before we get into what it is, let's talk about what it is. And I'm gonna warn you, it's beautiful. It's, well, it's not that beautiful, but yeah, just about. It is a K value leader. Number is K6535. This is one with two pickups. K6533 was single pickup. This one, we'll go through it here in a minute, but this is not the first one of these I've seen. In fact, the first one that I saw that was identical to this was probably, well, no, undoubtedly the worst arch top I have ever seen. It was worse than the Galliano junk pile. Remember the Galliano junk pile up there? Yeah, Nat Myers has it now. It's living a wonderful life in Kentucky, but I'll give you the playlist up there where we fixed it all up, watch through the end of it. You're going to be 20 years older by the time you get done with it, but anything you've ever seen that's wrong with an arch top, that playlist will have you knowing how to scrap, heap something back together. Back to this. Well, back to the first one I saw. Now, what is undoubtedly something that will tell you that um, the guitar is just junk. You're thinking bolt in the neck. Now, um, I don't know. Cracks, whatever. That's not it. It's shelf brackets holding the neck on. Hey, have you ever seen this one? This is made out of parts of a 19... 72 Chevy pickup truck. You see this? I made this for Reverend Peyton. There's actually two of them. And there is a film of this one being played in a sound check right up there. Get ready for some speed cigar box guitar this thing is raspy and noisy but just remember that shelf brackets holding the neck on so the first k6535 that i saw was in the hands of troy murrah and i saw it on a youtube episode or film and he was playing at some door outdoor concert and I'm going to give you a link to that up there. And when I saw that, wait till the end of the episode because this is all going to come together in an unbelievable woven tale, sordid tale. Um, anyway, I saw that clip of Troy playing that guitar and I said, that is the junkiest guitar I have ever seen. I'm going to own that guitar. Now, I wasn't talking about a guitar like that. I was talking about I was going to own that guitar. And when someone, anybody that knows me, knows when I say that, there's a good possibility, ought not, how's that for <laughs> my English teacher, love that, ought not to vote against me. So anyway. You don't believe me? Well, 
Look at that. Here's how it happened. Don't worry, we're still going to go through this. We have to live through the painful part here. So, I hunt down Troy Murrah. And a couple guitars into it later, I have worked on something that we know to be the restaurant junk pile, big body K, not one like this, a different one. Mm -hmm. And then he ended up with the Archcraft junk pile. Remember that one? Right up there. And so he also ended up with one of my coffee can guitars. So somewhere through this process, guilt set in, something set in. And one day I handed him the Archcraft guitar and he handed me the K value leader, the one with the number 12 on it. And um, and I took it home. And I looked at it. It was the worst. He had put a gaffer tape over the sound hose because this thing was um, feeding back something terrible. The action was that high. There were literally bolts running through the neck, shelf brackets, everything holding it together. So anyway... Tammy had seen this guitar on numerous videos, and she was happy to have it on the wall. As sure as honest Abe will swear to it, that is the case right there that the guitar was in. The number 12 K6535 double pickup, the Troy Murrah completely trashed. Believe me now? I told you more. You still don't believe me. Okay. Well, well as, as time would, would, uh, would tell, the Archcraft neck bowed up on Troy, and I ended up taking that back to fix it. And number 12 went back into uh, the rotation of Troy's gig. think I haven't forgot about it yeah yeah anyway so one day I'm up at Rob's in Ventura you know Rob and I've got a few guitars sitting around in the back that are too uh, good to jump out and I keep those for this this magic moment and that magic moment came because I walked into Rob's shop and there is the Guitar just like Troy's, except it's not totally Detroit. I mean, destroyed. In fact, this one was Detroit because there was nothing wrong with it. So let's walk through this right now. It's got the original tuners. Everything looks okay. No big belt rash. It's got the original tailpiece, which I found that hard to believe at first. I hadn't seen one, but there's no holes back there. It tells you anything is different. It's got the original um, strap button. It's got the top hat knobs. They're made out of aluminum or something. The kind of aluminum you'd tie around your television rabbit ear antennas in the 19th. It's got the three-way switch here. It's got the original bridge. It's got two K pancake pickups. 
before I forget, I want to tell you a little bit about these pickups. They were a stalwart of the K line and showed up on a lot of different things. This one is a neck pickup. I have one loose that's not on that guitar. Um, and it's stamped 23065. 23065. Um, and it's a shame, but people take these pickups off of guitars like this. I also have a, a Harmony Brilliant that's a single cutaway that somebody stripped down. Um, and I also have uh, that airline um, that I'll show with the speed bump pickups on it. It's intact. It has the three-way switches and all that. But people strip these down now. Rather than strip one down, there's a place to get these. And you don't have to worry about it. They look just like it. Curtis Novak makes these pickups now. Curtis Novak, check him out. I have used him, uh, used some of his pickups on a guitar. If there's a card left, I'll show you that up there. But anyway, we're going to give you Curtis Novak's information down below. If nothing else, these boxes are the coolest thing you ever saw because that's right. What color is that, people? Yeah, that is Chick Flick Teal, Padna. Okay, so while we're looking at this, this guitar was a little bit different than some of the other ones that we're typically used to seeing that come out of the Econo Arch top lines in America. That would be K's and Harmonies. Sometimes you would see, especially on the Harmony, something that said steel reinforced neck or reinforced neck, meaning somebody put a piece of uh, metal to make the neck stiffer. Um, but this one, believe it or not, it has a truss rod cover. Now, I've seen guitars with truss rod covers that when you took them off, there was nothing there. Have you ever seen a resonator that was like had a resonator, what looked like a resonator cover and cone, but <laughs> there was just a flat top guitar underneath it with some F holes up here maybe or sound holes up here. Some of these guitars were kind of like that. You would see a truss rod cover, but when you took it off, there was no truss rod under it. I, these strings, some of these are loose because I took these uh, screws out and looked and there is actually a truss rod in this guitar. It's not going to help us much because the neck needs to be reset. But nonetheless, it's still there. Of course, when we reset the neck, we're going to set that to neutral. And we'll talk about that when we do that episode. Pit guard, pit guard mount. Everything is there. Now, the guitar was pricey, as it should be. But there's something wrong with this guitar, right out of the shoe. Um, you probably think what's wrong with it is you don't have it, and I do. Well, that's too bad, but look, guys, when you're looking at these kinds of guitars and how pretty they are, and you look at that, you see that bridge? What's missing? The thumb wheels are missing, and the top of it's thin. That means somebody has been trying to correct the action. Look how high that action is. The problem here is there's a little air gap right here. The binding feels good. The, the binding has shrunk a little bit and fallen into here, but the binding looks really good, except there's a little telltale sign right here. This neck is starting to pop loose, and I am going to have to do a neck reset on this guitar. Now, what am I going to do with it? Well, I'm going to keep it. Have you seen that airline I've got that's like this? You probably have it. I don't want to hit you with too much to make you covet at once. I care about your eternal salvation, brother. Anyway. So. What do we know? Well, that headstock, it kind of has a T pattern to it. It was around between 1961 and 1965. Now, there's an N1, N, sign language, N. 
one inside. I have uh, come to learn that that N1 was used on any number of different bodies and just depending on how their configuration was. There is a, a number in here that's written with red crayon that I've learned means nothing, but this guitar was made between 1961 and 1965. Again, the double pickup was known as the K6535 two pickups. Uh, they had a model that had one pickup, K6533. Now, this guitar was in the catalog for $79.95, the two pickup model. The one pickup model was $59.95. Now, if you look at what that uh, seventy nine ninety five was worth in nineteen sixty one compared to today with the inflation escalator. This guitar today, if it were nineteen sixty one, given the inflation uh, factor, would cost you eight hundred and twenty three dollars. So this idea that the K's were really really cheap, this was not <laughs> the the, the silver tone Kentucky blue for 1950. This was uh, almost an $80 guitar, so it cost a bunch of money. Now, um, this story has taken us from the internet to Long Beach, California, to an old number 12 coming to my house, going back to Troy, and then me running off to... Um, uh, Rob and Ventura and then coming back with this and now I'm going to do a neck reset on this. So I decided two things. Number one, I needed to hear somebody that was good play this before um, I pulled the neck off of it. Action's a little bit high. So I went and found my friends Craig and Kathy who play blues out of Bakersfield. Uh, Garrison and Kennedy is the name of their band. I'm gonna give you some links down below so you can get to their stuff. Uh, Y'all know who Troy is. I'm gonna give you uh, a link to his stuff there. But I went out and saw Craig Garrison and he ran through this and we're gonna watch a little bit of that now. Once this guitar is done, I am going to do two things. I'm going to take it to Craig first and have him play it again. And then I'm going to find Troy. And we're going to take this with us because God knows Troy will Detroit, I mean destroy it. That's what Troy does. Anyway, let's catch Craig playing this guitar for the last time before I get the steamer out. Thanks for watching. Let's go see Craig. Okay, I am. Uh, I'm here at Triassic Vineyards with this beautiful uh, K archtop guitar. I don't know the model number or the name, but I know that it is completely intact and plugged in. We're gonna hear what it sounds like. <laughs>
fix that. Ah, well, this thing has got some, some howl, Daddy.